Hello, this is a bit of a jaunty angle, isn't it? We're uh, we're different today because I wanted to show you what's going on on something I've been doing as opposed to just me normally filming from up there. So yeah, I've called this uh, video Would You Like a Free FPV Sim? Uh, and that's kind of what it is. For the last, I think about six weeks ago, I started messing around with some code and it's kind of developed into a bit of a sim. Um, it started very basic just uh, basically moving around a, a landscape that I, I drew out and then I managed to put the radio together and, and work out how to do things like that. And I've kind of developed it a little bit further and I've kind of got to the point where I wanted to release a very early alpha version to you guys because um, I wanted you to be able to feedback about what's going wrong and what works for you and what doesn't work for you, that sort of thing. Just so I know I've got a stable base for when I actually come to do more with this and, and, and basically develop it further. My my idea behind this, and it, it's not supposed to be like the likes of Velocidrone and Liftoff, which are fantastic sims, but they're mainly aimed around going through racing gates very quickly, which is good and fine. Loads of people love racing. For me, I, I like racing's good once in a while, but I was concerned that it didn't really help out beginners that much. It wasn't teaching them the basics, just like how to go fast through a gate doesn't help you when you're just flying around a field. So the idea, uh, or the end point of what I'm trying to develop here is kind of like um, a help to beginners, kind of like you're going to the, the field with a more experienced guy who's done it before and can kind of hold your hand through stuff and show you how to do things. That is the ultimate plan. At the moment, it's a bit of a sort of virtual playground. I've chucked several things in um, to, to, for people to play with, literally, and I wanted to see what would work if it causes problems on anybody's systems, because I want, I don't want you to have to run on a big sort of, you know, games PC. This is a six-year-old iMac, so if it can run on this, it can probably be okay. That said, it's probably going to look a bit crappy on this one, because I'm going to do screen recording as well, so you don't have to just look at it from here, and that tends to make things chug on this one. Um, but let me show you what I got, and uh, and we'll, we'll take it from there. So I've got um, my radio plugged in via USB. And we've, I've just set up a basic model called Sim. And uh, when you launch the game, you're going to find this little launch thing and you can change your resolution and graphics quality. Try and run it in 16.9, that's how it's sort of set. But um, yeah, let's start screen recording and uh, we'll play. Developed using the Unity game engine, you probably see the splash screen on many places. And when you start the game, it will dunk you straight into the Sim. Uh, if you want to set up anything, hit P or Escape, you'll come to this menu. Um, the main one being the radio or joystick setup. Uh, we've got there a representation of our sticks we can move. So if like uh, your throttle was around the wrong way, just like click on throttle, it will reverse it. Uh, same for any of those. Meantime, up the top there, you've got the mode. So if you're a mode one fly, you can do that. Uh, and channel mapping, it's AETR by default. It can go to TEAR if that's what you prefer. Go back from that. Uh, not much in that, but we've got the keys instructions. Basically the keys, I'm going to talk about some of these as we go. And about support is basically uh, why I made this. My patron address, just in case. And uh, my email address, especially for the sim, if you find any problems or hassles and stuff like that. One, one of the things um, I noticed from my patrons, I've been chucking the sim out to and they've been trying it. I had one guy uh, called Franjo who has a Horus and he was getting real trouble with the whole um, stick control. So I haven't put a stick calibration on because everything I've plugged into it, it just works. So if you've got something that doesn't work, I really want to know about it and, and know exactly what the problem is. Uh, anyway, go, going back to the actual sim itself, up in this top uh, right corner here, you've got the RC rate, RC expo, super rate and camera angle. The rate stuff is modelled vaguely like uh, beta flight, and I'm afraid I've put my rates in as sort of defaults there. But uh, basically, you've got the um, plus and minus keys changes the super rate, uh, zero and nine the RC expo, and seven and eight the RC rate. So you can bring it right down to a, a place where you're more comfortable. That camera angle is the square brackets. Uh, to go up and down there. It, try it flat to start with if you want to see how it goes. i try it with about 30. So I'll take you on a quick tour of what we've got around uh, to start with. Uh, and first off, we are launching off a, uh, a little landing mat so you can 
practice your landing. There are a few things around here. We've got this little race course, ironically, after me saying I'm not into racing. Plenty of people are, so I stuck it in there. It's a good way of sort of uh, working out if you're able to fly through stuff like I'm not. I've put some grass around just to try and act as a bit of a helper to spot the ground details, really. Now, more excitingly for me, you will notice over here is a large beach ball because uh, I sort of stumbled on this by accident after managing to have an object with no gravity and it started bouncing around. But this beach ball, I thought, is a brilliant way of um, getting used to sort of uh, control of your quad without racing through gates. Basically, you just go around and give it a good old knock and it will bounce around. And if you can sort of knock it while it's bouncing, it's very satisfying. And if you can push it up a hill, uh, I'd really love to see that because that's pretty amazing stuff. But I figured it's another way of learning how to fly and doing things like how to corner very quickly, how to get your height right, how to sort of chase things around, keep things in view. I kind of like that. Similarly, if we go over here, we've got a bunch of trees. Um, I wanted to put the trees in again to find out if it affected anybody's uh, CPU badly, are they, are they causing their system to chug? Causes this one to chug when it does screen recording, normally it looks okay. Uh, and basically you can sort of go around, you can find your path through some trees, generally mess around, uh, stuff like that. And there's a, a few trees around in, in all sorts of places. Um, we can head up here to the top of this hill and sort of dive this tree carry on down the um, little hill there. Um, so if we cross over the desert, we'll head up the, the big mountain here. Generally, as far as um, the graphics in this go, if you see something and it looks a bit rubbish, it means I've modeled it. If you see something like this whole mountain and this general uh, terrain, and you think, well, that looks quite good, it means it's a free asset that someone has kindly provided um, for me to use. And that's exactly what the mountain, the trees, and all the buildings are. Everything else um, is my stuff. And again, I've put this here because A, it's sort of, you know, fun to mess around and use trees as your little course. Um, and another thing I really like to do is kind of hug the terrain. And when the terrain sort of falls away from you, uh, it's good fun just to sort of, you know, follow the mountain down, see what you can do. We're in the old sort of TBS uh, mountain videos as we go here. So the sort of last thing here is the city, just in the distance. I say city, a collection of buildings with a road going around it. Um, let's check that out, because again, uh, it's just a fun thing to sort of mess around and go in and out of uh, and see what you can do with it. And again, I wanted to see how it affected people's systems. Is it going to grind them to a halt? Is it going to be okay? We have an undulating desert, which creates interesting road conditions, kind of lumpy and bumpy there. But you can do stuff like you can sort of, you know, fly around the roads. Uh, I call it a bit of an oasis in the desert, so I put a few palm trees in there, which you can mess around with. Um, I also put this little sort of, I suppose it's kind of Beverly Hill style, but different trees. A sort of tree-lined road that I thought it might be fun to sort of fly through. And, oops, try not to hit. Do different things with them. And, of course, you can do the obligatory building dive so just go up nice and high Whoa, got that wrong and uh, whoop, dive away donk <laughs> we've hit the floor um, so so again in terms of errors I'm looking for uh, the building should be set up so if you were to fly into a building like this you would hit the building you would either bounce off and collapse on the floor Right now you can just kind of turn over again. It's possible you can clip through the floor as I just did there. I already know about that one, don't have to tell me about that. Um, but you've kind of got that to play with. You'll notice there's a massively big tower at the top here. Literally looking a bit silly because I've stretched the texture out far too much. This is for two reasons. A, because it's super fun to do really long building dives and I'm not going to get the chance in real life. Secondly, I put it up here as a sort of aid to do the inverted orbit, which isn't really inverted, it's kind of um, a case of looking backwards with enough camera angle. So I'm at about 
36 degrees camera angle at the moment. If I just keep that in the background, uh, I, I do it with pushing sticks slightly together. People do it different ways. But we should get kind of an inverted orbit. And if we increase the throttle, we should be able to climb all the way up to the top. And uh, dive back down again. So I put this here as much as practicing that and um, just making sure that the sim actually worked as it should do, which it does seem to. Generally what I'm looking for, aside from, yeah, please have fun with it, try it out, do what you like. I'm looking for any problems you might find. Um, so if you're if you're flying through stuff and that doesn't seem right, that's, that's not correct. Things I know about are stuff like if you're on the floor and you turn over, you can clip through the floor. You can fly outside of the border of the level here, you see where it ends, and you can just keep going because I haven't done any bounds checking there. Similarly, if you want to, you can zap the throttle up and you can go to I think very, very, very high indeed, um, because I haven't said there's a limit on that. So those are things I know about, but things if you start flying through things and your quad starts acting weirdly or your your radio's not reacting right, I, I'd really like to know where the problems are there so I can fix them before I sort of move on. Um, should you get into a, a bad position, you can hit the R button, uh, which will reset you back to your landing pad. I'll put the camera down a bit, you can see it here. Uh, I should also point out as well that, that as far as trees go, trees, if you hit them, you will sort of bounce off or bad things that happen. But it's only kind of like the central trunk bit. So let's see if I can demonstrate that. I should be able to kind of fly through these leaves. Let me just have a go. Fly through leaves is okay. Swishy noise perhaps. But if I try and get through something a bit more solid like this trunk here, missed it. Uh, where's the trunk? There's one. You will uh, hit it and, and crash. So the other thing that I really could do with some feedback on is if you press the D button for debug, you get a couple of little things here over in the top left, which is the throttle multiplier and the gravity multiplier. This um, Unity uses this middleware engine called Physics, which is basically you, you give things velocity, it goes up, you give it gravity, it comes back down again. However, on the default gravity, which effectively does model the gravity in the world, we found it a bit floaty. I thought it was a bit floaty. The guys on Patreon that tried it also reported it, it was a bit floaty. So I've increased the gravity and you can change that with the uh, buttons one and two. It will increase the gravity multiplier by 0 0.05 every time, which can make quite a bit of difference. Uh, but if that happens you will need more throttle because you need more thrust so the throttle multiplier goes hand in hand with that and you can alter that with the three and four buttons um, and uh, again you can you can alter the throttle multiplier anyway if you feel it's got too much power or too little power you can do that really interested to see how it feels for you guys because although gravity is a set constant in the physical world it didn't feel right to me so i've tried to do it with feel I've gone and I've flown it and I was like, nah, that feels about right and I've, I've come up with these figures. But if they're different to you, I'd really love to hear your feedback on that and uh, let me know what your figures are, what your preferred figures are. Anything you change, and that is um, stuff like, should you go in and reverse your pitch, for example, um, and quit out, all that information should be saved. So should you then go back in we should find that our pitch is still reversed and our information, our camera angle and rates and everything is all the same. So I've developed this on a Mac, but I've got a Windows build as well. I'm gonna put links to those. It's just on my Google Drive where you can download them and run them. The Windows one comes as a sort of directory with a bunch of stuff, but there's an exe file in there, you'll get the hang of it. The uh, Mac version is just an, a single app which you can run. People running Catalina, I haven't run that myself, might have issues. People seem to have issues running anything on Catalina. So aside from those two links for the two versions of the code, you can run it yourself and, and see what happens here. I'm just gonna let that fly off, see what happens. Um, I'm gonna put a special email address in the description as well. Now, if you've got general comments about like, I tried it and 
thumbs up or I'd love to see this or this or this. Shove them in the comments by all means and uh, you know all the normal stuff please comment down below subscribe click on the little bell icon yada yada yada. If you've got a, a problem you, you've hit an issue and you need to show it to me then this is the time to use the email address down below. Let me know exactly what you found. If you can make a video of it, just a screen capture or holding your phone in front of it, send me to a, a load that on YouTube or something. You could have it unlisted if you like. Send me the link in that email. It's quite important it goes in email instead of YouTube comments because what happens is YouTube just says this is spam and chunks it in the, the spam folder. Uh, and it takes me a while to dig through all the hundreds of messages that are truly spam looking for things that aren't to pull them out again to respond to them so yeah if, if you get a chance to um, leave any sort of feedback of, of what, what you'd like to see or if you've got a problem then leave it in there so the things I'm going to be working on and my, my general plan for it is um, I want to do some sort of interactive lessons I want to say the basics like this is how you land and I want to show like what I would do what my sticks are and how I'd sort of approach it and maybe you can sort of copy that. Um, a, a couple of graphical things, the, the angle I'm not happy with. I, I need to sort of simulate the idea of the sort of slightly more fisheye effect there. Um, I've, I've noticed that when, when I look back at my own footage, the, the props are often like that because there's, there's a natural distortion that that does, which I'd quite like to see. Um, you saw the ball there. Um, it, it came up with various ideas for sort of gamifying what we can do using the control method of a quad um, and and doing things like you know kicking a ball about uh, perhaps to people perhaps around a course um, things like that where you can really use your flying skills without being a sort of more traditional going through gates and stuff um, I'd like to do something about how to do chase footage maybe have a, a, a drone drone <laughs> going around so that you can chase uh, and right now nothing nothing here is set in stone this is this is a general play area. I wanted to try it with a large area that you could explore and have lots of things in rather than a small area with one thing and another small area with one thing. Uh, and again, uh, I'm sort of relying on some feedback from you guys about does this work? Does this slow down your system? Is it too big? Is it too boring? That sort of thing. All would be really useful to, to do the next step. But yeah, aside from that, this is, this is my sim. It's at the moment called the Curry Kitten Quad Sim because I didn't have a name. It shall have a name eventually, and it will be a bit better than that, but it will it will be a free sim. It will always be free. That's my plan. It's gonna be sort of constantly tweaked and developed because I've got so many ideas. Um, and I've been looking at this, as I said, for about six weeks, but I've only had a, about a day a week really to really work on it properly. So I need to spend an awful lot more time, but I wanna get out there now. It's early alpha build. Alpha means it's a proof of concept. None of the real features are there. That's when it becomes a beta and then it, it gets to eventual release. But yeah, this is early, but plug it in, give it a try. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've got any problems, etc, etc. I hope you can give it a go. And uh, if you can feedback, that'd be great. Until next time, catch you later. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.